All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It was quite the uneventful day in the market, literally the lowest volume of the entire year with that record held by yesterday's trading. And it's all ahead of NVIDIA earnings as everybody is getting ready to know whether or not that AI bubble is going to continue or not. So here's the deal. Although I would like to give you a watch list and explain a lot of the market and this and that, I mean, it's absolutely dead it is absolutely boring and why i'm saying that because it's weird considering how big of an event nvidia is tomorrow so what i thought i would do instead is give you guys an earnings preview i was going to go over the balance sheet and show you a couple of cool things but and that was shout out my boys at 2k bro they they requested this uh the balance sheet one but i said hey it's earnings this is a big deal here with nvidia let's go over the preview let's go over some of the key talking points and then i I'm going to share with you some of the analyst stuff because a lot of you guys ask me, where do you get this? Where do you get that? Some of the info is hard to get your hands on. It is not always public, but that's why I'm hoping these videos can be where you get them. You know what I'm saying, baby? So I have a good video for you. We're going to talk about NVIDIA, what you should be looking for tomorrow. I'm going to share with you the estimates so that right when the data comes out tomorrow, you're going to be ready to go. And then we'll talk about some of the key themes that are driving this stuff stock and what people are looking for because clearly AI and these AI trends, it is the biggest theme that we have been dealing with for almost two years now after we wrap this up. So I have all that for you. What I need from you, a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open youtube.com slash the stock market. We will see you there in the morning, baby. Run it. Still reinvesting, fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if you waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. But right off the bat, let's start with what is expected for this quarter. And you can screenshot this right now because, like I'm saying, when the data comes out tomorrow, these are the numbers people are looking for. So the company they gave guidance of twenty-eight billion dollars plus or minus two percent, and right now it looks like analysts are at $28.72 billion. We're going to talk about this because with everything going on with NVIDIA and how bullish people are, it is actually showing up on the estimates. So by default, most analysts tomorrow are expecting NVIDIA to outperform. They're expecting $25 billion from the data centers. Gaming is expected to bring in $2.7 billion. Proviz expected to bring in $449.8 million. And Automotive and robot Robotics at 344. The gap gross margin or non-gap is expected to be 75.6 versus guidance of 75.5. Now, I could read all of these to you, but I'm going to assume you know how to read all of them. And then this is where things get very good because, or, or let me see, I'm making sure I get it good. Uh, because next quarter, Analysts right now are expecting about $31.69 in revenue. Take a look there at margin. And this is one thing I will tell you right off the bat for tomorrow. The margin is going to be one of the most important things. It goes top line numbers. Everybody wants to know how much money they're bringing in. That's going to determine whether it's good or bad. The next thing people are going to be looking at is data center. This is really the main event. That's where all of the AI stuff comes in. I mean, take a look at these numbers and notice how much bigger data center really is and then their margin and what they are bringing in on these products that is going to be something that could really move the stock so now that you have those numbers out the way here is how this stock has performed since may 22 the last quarter nvidia is literally up 33 and a half percent remember they had the stock split and all of that well this thing is still absolutely killing it the spy is up by 5.9 and the technology index is up by three so what does this mean? NVIDIA is outperforming everything. SPY, its peers, you name it, they are doing better. And if you go look at the options chain, this is the beauty about this preview. You know how we do the pricing and it's actually the tutorials in the description. If you are unfamiliar how to play this or how I would play this, I would definitely watch that video in the description. But if you do go to the options chain, give or take by tomorrow, it should be pricing in an 11.2% move, meaning the 
the options market is expecting an 11% move up or down. And now, I don't know, because of the split, this may not seem like a big amount. Oh, my goodness, this is absolutely massive. And to give you an idea of the context of NVIDIA, based on how much weighting it has on the NASDAQ, it can move the NASDAQ 180 points tomorrow. That is about 0.8%. So if you don't know what that means, that means if nothing in the market moved and NVIDIA went up or down, it could move the market almost 1% all by its wee little self. So that's absolutely huge. And as far as the pricing is concerned, it's a pretty decent movement. Again, 11% of a couple trillion dollars is nothing to balk at. So that's what's priced in. The other thing you got to be looking at is how it's moved over the last four quarters. The last two quarters have been very big. And the last two quarters before that, they were kind of watered down. So when it comes to me playing it, I'm always going to be playing it after the report because a year ago, some of these moves weren't that big. But as of recently, we have gotten big moves. But then again, they've came out with more announcements and even updates like their stock split. So here's the rest of the data. But now what I want you to understand stand here in terms of like getting the full picture like I told you guys here in the beginning Wall Street is expecting a beat on the upper end of the current guidance. So right now, Wall Street is expecting an outperformance on quarter two. So if you hear the numbers tomorrow were below this quarter, that would be a surprise. Even if it came in at the $28 billion that the company was expecting, I don't think that will be taken well because most analysts are expecting them to go above the upper end of guidance. There's about 40 analysts who have made estimates, and the consensus is that they are supposed to outperform in terms of revenue. Now, the margin, this is where it's interesting because although many analysts agree that they should be outperforming, and outperforming is the consensus, the margin is expected to arrive at the midpoint of guidance, meaning people will be okay if the margin doesn't outperform, but they do think that it should show some improvement improvement and it shouldn't decline that much. So that's the basics as far as revenue and margin and what we're expecting tomorrow right when those numbers come out. But now as far as what is important and not, this is in order from most important to least important. The data center is the number one thing everybody is going to be looking for. Then gaming, then pro viz, then automotive. Honestly, gaming, pro viz, and automotive, these are either going to pad the stats or not. And what I mean by that is that if data center is really good or really bad, that will overshadow anything and that's kind of the thing here because like I said I want to go over and like a deep dive into Nvidia and talk about everything going on with this AI stuff but you guys should be familiar with how earnings works you know the numbers come out everybody reacts the computers react right away then you get the conference call then people start talking and then reacting and then we wake up in the morning and then you get the continuation over the next couple of days but people are focused on these main points that's why I want you guys to know exactly what to be looking for so you could determine whether or not tomorrow is a good beat or it was a miss. So that's what I want in terms of the broader stuff. So now let's talk about some of the nitty gritty and the focus areas for tomorrow. Then we'll get into what some of the analysts are saying. But number one, this is something I've been talking about over the last couple of days. I'm sure if you even searched NVIDIA in the news, you may have heard something about this. But for now, the number one focus is this Blackwell delay over the last couple of weeks. I think it was Goldman or even UBS who talked about it. There was NVIDIA talking about significant revenue generation from Blackwell and they were talking about this being delivered around December and then all of a sudden they came out saying there's going to be a delay of a couple of weeks that got people worried for a little bit some people in the analyst community they are very very worried about it but a majority they're thinking it's not going to be that big of a deal they'll get some color and a little bit of clarity on it but it shouldn't be that bad but what people are going to be looking for is this Blackwell delay is it a big issue? Is it a non-issue? And even so, how long do we expect to hear about this? And what is the timing around when things are going to get delivered or how long things will be delayed and impacting the stock? So this was a big deal. Probably the number one thing into it because I'm like I said, I'm sure 
sure if you go search NVIDIA, people are talking about how this Blackwell delay is more important than the revenue and all of that. I don't really think that's the case unless there is really some black swan news. But like I'm saying, or like I've showed you here, there's a little bit more to the story. They need to beat the upper end of revenue. Their margin has to beat the midpoint of guidance because that's what people are expecting. And now this Blackwell thing has to not be an issue all the while while showing they are leading the whole pack with AI. And that's what leads into the second main focus for NVIDIA and their earnings tomorrow, the AI spending and demand trends. So right when the report comes out, you may be able to get a little bit of insight into this one, but this is going to show up on the conference call and people and analysts are going to be looking for the trends and whether or not there's going to be enough of this AI demand into 2025 specifically one thing you want to look for is operating expenses not nvidia's but other people's they're going to be talking about how all of these companies need to be investing and investing and here's the demand into 2025 people want to know if this is still viable and if we could see some of these trends continuing into the next year to fuel all of these gains in growth that everybody has been looking for so that's a big focus and then number three i'm not too familiar with this but i did see a lot of people talking about it and it does kind of make sense you may not understand the whole rack scale thing and and the full stack and all of that, but it's very simple. What are the AI and demand trends, but more so how is NVIDIA stacking up against the competition? And this is big because AMD, they recently had that acquisition. We've heard a lot, even what you're going to hear this whole earnings, SMCI, AMD, a lot of analysts are TSM. They're bringing up some of the recent performance and some of the recent pivots and acquisitions. People are trying to compare this to NVIDIA and how they are stacking up. So as far as what you should be looking out for tomorrow, keep an ear to this street on competition because it Again, it's been almost two years here. NVIDIA has been flying high without anybody getting in their way. Let's see how they respond to any of these questions. Or if you see bad numbers, I will. I, I guarantee it, people will start blaming competition because they haven't had competition. If I could give you a good fundamental example, it reminds me of Netflix. I've been an early Netflix investor. Not only do we buy it in like $100, $200 for you guys on the long term, I've been invested in that thing since like 20 2014, 2015. So the thing about Netflix is that in the beginning, they killed it. There was literally, they were high rising and growing and they had no competition. But essentially, once the numbers started slowing down, they blamed the competition. Even though competition existed while Netflix was running up, nobody blamed them until the numbers started declining. So if we do see a numbers decline, I definitely think that word competition will come up. Otherwise, they're probably going to say how confident they are and how they plan on keep running up. So that's the third main focus and then finally as far as some of the more tertiary segments gaming just be on the lookout for inventory levels in demand any updates on those it could get people excited because last quarter nvidia did say demand for the gaming was going up and that helped a little bit on top of the split news and everything else that they came out with and then as far as the automotive segment Believe it or not, it's tied to the whole EV thing. So as long as EVs do good, even a little bit of Tesla, we could hear a little bit more. But I do think gaming could give you an overall back-end boost, a way, way bigger than anything in automotive unless they announce some big development with like Elon and Tesla and all of that. So hopefully that helps. These are the four main focuses we're going to be keeping our eye out for. And now... Let's see what some of these analysts have been talking about. So Stifle, they're the ones who have been saying this, that Blackwell commentary will probably overshadow guidance in their opinion. They do think that they're going to kill it on this quarter, be above the med midpoint, all of those things that we've heard about, but they're not as focused on the guidance and they think whether it's good or bad news out of Blackwell guidance or that delay, that will be more important than the quarter three guidance. But even so, Stifle is expecting a beat and raise, and the way they're looking to categorize the whole Blackwell delay, they think it'll be measured in delays in months instead of quarters. Why this is important? Because, like I'm saying here, we don't know the details. Some people are talking about air pockets in January and April of 2025. So think about that. People now, depending on how this Blackwell delay is announced tomorrow and what sort of color we get behind it, 
people are thinking this is either going to be something for the end of the year and then we're back right back on the road or is this something that's going to kind of be choppy and then we have to start carrying into 2025 that is a big question and that is what stifle is saying so they're the first one ubs they have a lot more to say and i'm sure you'll see it here a couple of times like i already told you guys earlier all of the analysts pretty much any analyst commentary that i saw they were all mentioning amd tsmc and then smci remember some of these other bigger chip names they have already reported. Remember, AMD was good. TSMC was really good. SMCI, they even had high demand. Everything was good so far, so don't forget that coming into NVIDIA tomorrow, but they see a upside to the July print, and they think that the data rev data center revenue can go as high as $26 billion, so they are very bullish on this quarter, and they think the AI data center is only going to be booming, and they also think as far as any supply or, excuse me, demand concerns are concerned they're thinking it's going to be an easy ride simply because smci they mentioned positive hopper demand on their earnings and then there was a very good earnings out of tsmc ubs is not worried at all in terms of this 2025 demand and things carrying through with the trends there was one bad trend with tsmc they had bad data processing numbers but ubs said they aren't worried there's historical variability and again they think the data centers are just going to carry everything. And like I told you guys earlier, they are the ones that mentioned this whole idea of, okay, if you were saying significant demand on Blackwell revenue by December, how is this delay going to play out? So they said it's the main concern, but overall, they still think there's going to be good demand and upside. Generally, they are thinking that everything is going to be okay. And then finally, Goldman Sachs, they believe that delays from Blackwell is probably going to cause some near-term volatility as everybody struggles or fights to figure that out, but they are overall believing that the fundamentals are solid. They are reiterating their buy rating on the stock, and they even maintain their price target of 135, and that's something I'll tell you tomorrow or even after the earnings. Remember, a lot of people might start changing this. So I forgot to include this in the document, but as of now... The average price target, this is around 142.63. And what I'm talking about is after this report here, people are going to either keep raising this or they're going to lower it if they do bad. But to give you an idea of where all of the analysts stack up, 92% of them are on a buy. There are zero sales compared to August of 2023. And now you have about 8% holding. And then the stock is trading about what? $12? or $14 below its average price target. So this is a big deal, especially considering how many of them there are. But like I'm saying, some people are a little bit more or less bullish. You can see Goldman, they're in at 135. They're not the top end. They're below the median there, but they are still expecting something that is generally bullish. But like we said here, they think it'll be a little bit of short-term volatility, but they are overall bullish on the stock. They do think that the market is likely to overlook the negative impacts from the Blackwell ramp and the timing, and they think the strong hopper demand is going to bring everything through. And again, this whole hopper demand, where is it coming from? It is all TSM, SMIC, even AMI, AMD. They're bringing all these analysts. I'm telling you, they will not shut up about how good these earnings are. And everybody is feeding that into the NVIDIA AI trend. So that's the good part. And if anybody said anything a little bit more unique about what's going on here, I do think Goldman brought up something amazing. They believe that the AI demand for like 2025 and moving forward, they are very, very bullish on advertising companies and they were talking about how these ad businesses are going to keep spending on AI and they are more likely to overspend than underspend because there's already results that are showing up and nobody in this advertising business wants to get left behind. I thought that was very interesting because as everyone's trying to use TSM and SMCI and AMD to figure out demand, Goldman saying, no, just look at the ad industry. They are benefiting off of AI right here, right now, and nobody's going to get left behind 
fine and they are going to overspend. They already did overspend and they're going to keep doing it all the way into next year. So in short, what they say is they believe the risk to reward on the stock is favorable with their most bullish scenario pointing to 89% potential upside versus 61% potential downside under our most bearish scenario. And then they reiterate their price target. So Hopefully, you guys are putting together all of these pieces here. I really do hope this helps you tomorrow. My play, all I'm going to do, man, is play the earnings afterwards. So if you guys haven't watched, literally, I'm, I'm glad I could say this with a lot of confidence. Sometimes it was very brutal. I mean, I was down unrealized before, but every single earnings trade on NVIDIA, I have hit with a 100% success rate. Like I'm saying, sometimes I'll be down for a couple of weeks or it will be immediate success. But what I'm trying to tell you is that by waiting till after they report, again, I don't, I'm not playing this long-term game by the top tick, the options, they're pricing in 11%. Maybe it does hit, maybe it doesn't. But like I showed you guys on the preview, I mean, it was what, not too long ago, like literally about three, four quarters ago, this thing was barely moving. So if you end up spending, you know, X amount of dollars uh, on an option pricing in 11, 12% and it only moves two, then you're going to get screwed on that. So I like to play the shares after the report, after I get the numbers and imagine all of this info that I shared with you, this watch list will help you play it after hours because you know what to watch for on the conference call. You know what numbers to compare for guidance. You know what to be looking for with Blackwell, the demand. If you see certain trends, even down to the segments, you can make that assessment there. So I think it's really easy to play it afterwards. I am not going to play it ahead of time, but depending on how this plays out tomorrow, the only final piece of all of it, like I told you guys in the beginning, it's going to be how it moves the market. It will have the ability to move us a lot. This will be our first big event of the week, and then we get into the PCI and see where it takes us. But if this sours the water or muddies the water, uh, it'll be an interesting end of the year. But also at the same respect, if this gives us smooth sailing into the end of the year, maybe that even supports more of your soft landing. So Chad, I hope you enjoyed it. I hoped it helped, but... That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait, and make sure you guys see us. YouTube.com slash the stock market YouTube. Oh, I should have said that in the beginning. But we're live Monday through Friday. Wait, no, no, wait. Okay, live. Hard. <laughs>